Hey everyone and welcome to today's video. So today what we are going to be doing is we are going to be creating a site to site VPN from our AWS to our local Microtech. So if you have ever come across a customer who needs the service where they have an AWS EC2 instances and they want to connect their local Microtech router which is in their office, this will help you in giving them the service. So if you want to create a demo or uh, you want to do lab on this first in your office, you can do that uh, by creating a free AWS account. And to create a free AWS account, all you need is a photo ID and a credit card. That's it. All you need is a credit card and a photo ID. Once you create an AWS account, it takes about 24 hours to get it activated. Uh, once it is activated, you can just enter your console and start working on it. So I've already made my account and I'm entering the console now. Uh, make sure of one thing uh, before we go any further that AWS site to site VPN is a paid service. So if you activate the AWS site to site VPN, you're going to get charged whether you're using for a minute or for a second. The minimum charge is for the hour. So be careful and don't leave it open, uh, don't leave it activated in case you are not using it. So I've created my account and I've logged into my management console. So once you're here, uh, what I've done here is I've created an EC2 instance, a free EC2 instance. So when you are on AWS free tier, you can create a free EC2 instance that is a T2 Nano instance. And what I've done here is I've created an EC2 instance with a Microtech router. So this instance that is running right now is a CHR. So I'm not going to be creating a site to site uh, VPN between the CHR hosted on AWS and the router at my end. But what I'm doing to do today is I'm going to create a site to site VPN from my router to AWS account. And I'm going to be connecting through the private IP address of the CHR uh, that is this IP address, which is the private IP address. So let's go to site to site VPN. Uh, you can search this from the top and you can select site to site VPN here. So before you create a VPN connection, what you need to do is two things. One, create a customer gateway. So let's create a gateway. Let's name it a uh, VPN from office. So here, Either you can do dynamic routing or static routing. So in static routing, you'll need to enter the static route. In dynamic routing, you can do it through BGP. So we'll do it through BGP and uh, we'll assign the BGP ASIN that we are going to be using as 65,000 default. And let's give the IP address of a router here that we will be using to connect to this BGP. So this device is Microtech. Uh, we are not selecting any ARN. Let's create the customer gateway and the customer gateway is created. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create a virtual private gateway. So let's create that. Uh, let's create it Microtech VPN and Amazon default ASN. Let's create that. Now uh, let's create the site to site VPN connection and uh, let's give it a tag that we want to connect to to office so that we know what we are doing. So our target going to be the virtual private gateway that we just now created. It could be transit gateway also, but we are doing it through virtual private gateway. The customer gateway is also we just created right now. Our routing option is going to be dynamic and the tunnel inside IP version is IPv4. The local IP address is going to be the IP address of the office site. So let's say this is 10.10.10. 0 slash 24 and the remote IPv4 network is going to be the AWS site network. In case you don't know what that is, what I suggest is uh, that you open a fresh window and you enter into the console here and you go to your VPC. In case you don't see a VPC in quick access, you can search it from the top here. Once you're in your VPC, just click on your VPCs and this VPC is the one that my router or my EC2 instance is currently using. So we'll input this. Let's copy this and paste it here. So the next option is let's leave it default for Amazon to create for us and let's create a VPN connection. So our VPN connection is now ready. 
let's check it it is still forming so in the meantime let's download the configuration and let's go to our router to configure our microtech router which is on the site that is our premise so let's see there is a microtech here router OS and 6.47 now i want to say one thing here that the configuration that is given here is for only 6.47 while we are going to be using the newest 6.49.2 or 7.1 so don't worry uh, we are going to go through step by step and see how do we configure our router so let's download ike version 1 so our configuration file is downloaded uh, let's open it and uh, this is the configuration given by amazon which is a pre-built configuration you can configure your routers using this but the amazon configuration is a bit old microtech has changed certain things in the configuration that you will have to decipher yourself or you can just continue watching the video so let's open our microtech router at this point let's open both the things side by side so we are able to do configuration also and we are able to look at this documentation also so the first task we need to do is create an ipsec proposal as per the documentation so let's get into the ip ipsec and proposal so let's create a fresh proposal here and let's copy paste certain things from here you can use your own names but i'm just using it so that you know uh, where everything is going and it's not a uh, surprise for you so that says that authorization algorithm should be SHA SHA-1 and encryption algorithm should be 128 CBC and a lifetime should be one hour not 30 minutes so let's change this to one hour and the PFS group should be mod P1024 so this is okay let's save this so the next task for us is to create the internet key exchange for this let's go to ip so for this uh, we need to go into ip ipsec policies but here i would like to pause you because if you read through this whole thing uh, there is a disclaimer given below that microtech handles routing very differently and this is very true so whatever is there in your ip route tables will be overwritten if you create an ipsec policy here so to overcome this right now let's leave it where it is and let's go into the task ahead and that is that let's not create the policies for the time being and what we are going to do is we are going to create an ipsec profile so let's get into our profiles and let's create that and let's name it the same as the documentation has the hashing algorithm is sha1 the encryption algorithm is aes128 let's remove three des the dh group is 1024 let's remove 2048 which is on by default the lifetime is going to be eight hours and not one day so let's change that the dpd interval is 10 and the dpd maximum failure is 3 and select okay so we don't need to change anything else let's click okay and the profile is ready the next thing that we need to do is create an ip ipsec peer so let's create a peer from here so let's name this as aws site and the address on the other side is this so let's copy uh, the address from here and put it here on our address section and the local address is going to be the address of our router so let's copy paste that also the profile that we are going to be using is the profile that we just created and the exchange mode is going to be main that is okay and we are sending the initial contact let's apply this and okay and the next is the identity so let's create an identity uh, this is going to be the for AWS site. Uh, we are going to be using pre shared key as said by the documentation. And uh, let's copy paste our key now. So let's copy this and let's paste it on the secret. And select apply. Uh, no, other no further changes are to be done. Let's click it apply and OK. 
by now the peer should be active but we haven't made any policies yet so to create policies let's go to the third task that is the tunnel interface configuration and let's create an ip address as suggested by the documentation let's click plus and uh, let's apply this ip address that is given to our WAN outside interface and our WAN outside interface is the same interface with which we are connecting to the internet. In my case, it's Ether1. So let's apply it. Okay. So now uh, let's create a policy. So to create policies, uh, let's go to policies and click plus. And for we are creating this policy for AWS site. We want the tunnel. So the source address for us is going to be 169.254.206.234. The destination IP is going to be 169.254.206.232 slash 30. Uh, that is the IP pool that we want to reach to. And we are going to reach through this AWS site. And, and we are going to encrypt and the proposal that we are going to be using is the ipsec proposal that we created and we also want to create one more policy let's click on proposal let's click on channel it's going to be aws site the source address uh, for us is going to be 10.10.10.0 10 10.10.10.0 10 10 slash 24 the destination ip address is going to be 172.31.0.0 16 this is the same ip pool that we had defined earlier while creating the site to site vpn in aws let's click on apply and okay and uh, we see that this is established so let's go on and uh, let's complete the routing part by creating the bgp instance so to create PGP uh, in the new router OS v7.1, uh, you need to go into connections and then add from here. Let's create, uh, let's say this is to AWS and our AS is 65,000 as we had made this in the customer gateway on the AWS site to site VPN configuration. The router ID, let's keep the same as the inside VPN IP. This is 169.254.206.234 in my case, 206.234. And the remote address is 169.254.206.233. And the remote ASN is 64512. This is the default ASN for AWS site to site VPN. The local address, if you want to set, you can set it is going to be the same. And if you don't set, in that case also it will work. But to be on safe side, let's set this. The local role is going to be each BGP. And then we want to enable the connect and the listen. And uh, let's apply these changes. Uh, but before uh, we can do anything else, what needs to happen is uh, we need to create a filter rule so that uh, we are able to send our prefixes to the AWS network. So in the new router OS v7, what you need to do is go into IP firewall and go into the address list and here create an address list I'm creating by the name of AWS and the IP that I want to broadcast is 10.10.10.0 slash 24. Let's apply this and OK. And in the filter section of the BGP connection in the output network, I will define AWS. This is the same name that we had given to our address list and I will apply it. Now you go and go into the peer cache and uh, let's check if the filter is applied. Yes, the filter is applied and the connection is established. So let's go over to our AWS site to site VPN page and see if it can now see the BGP connection and can see our IP address. So here in the AWS site to site VPN, we see that the IPsec is up, but the status is down. The status is for the BGP. Let's refresh and see if it comes up. The status is still down, but we see here that it is established and we are sending one prefix also. 
Sometimes AWS site takes time to update. It can go up to 10 minutes, but don't worry about it. So finally it had come up. What I had done is I had basically stopped the connection and restarted it and immediately it came up. And we also see that one BGP route is coming from our side to AWS. Now let's open our router pack again and let's check if we are also getting a route. Now we see that there is no route coming. The reason for that is the virtual private gateway that we had created, we had not attached it to the VPC. So the virtual private gateway that we had created here is detached. It is not attached to any VPC, so it is not being broadcasted. That means the AWS side is not sending us any prefix. So let's select this and let's go into action and let's attach it to a VPC. And the VPC that we have to attach it is this one, the one below. In case that you do not know which one is it, you can go to your VPC management and you can check up the VPC that you want to connect to. And for me, this is the same VPC. It has no name. The other VPC has a name. So I know that this is the VPC. In case you had given a name, it will come here. So let's click this and attach this. Once you attach, this will go into the attaching mode and after the attachment is done, the BGP will broadcast the IP prefix to you. That is the AWS side is going to broadcast the IP prefix to you. So now the state has changed to attached. Let's go back into our router to check if we have got the route. And yes, we have got the route and this is the route that is coming. So by now we should be able to ping our EC2 instance, the IP address for the EC2 instance of 172.31.93.195. And let's the source IP address be 10.10.10.1. And this is the IP address here. Let's see, but this is not pinging. There is some more problem. So what we need to do is we need to check if the AWS site is getting our BGP route, but is it getting installed on the routing table? So let's check this. So if you go up, there is a route table here and let's correct the route table that we need to see. And let's see the associated addresses here. And this is not the one we are seeking. Let's see the other one. So this route table does not have our IP prefix. The IP prefix here is missing. So how do we resolve this? To resolve this, go into the route propagation and edit the route propagation. So what we need to enable here is any route that is coming from the virtual gateway, that is the VPN service, should get installed in this routing table. And now we see that our route has finally been installed in the routing table. So let's go back into our router and we are now able to connect to our EC2 instance. So I hope that today's video helped you. Do let me know in the comment section below what you think and do subscribe to my channel to get the latest updates on videos like this. Until we meet the next time, stay safe and goodbye.